Inside the Birds is back. What's going on, everybody? It's Jeff Mosher and Adam Kaplan for an Inside the Birds that is presented by our friends at Ocean Casino Resort in Atlantic City, the exclusive Jersey Shore Resort of Inside the Birds. All right, well, we are uh, rounding out June here, getting ready for July. So that means we've got um, a really cool episode today. We're going to discuss our our candidates, guys that Adam and I put our heads together and think are the most likely candidates to have a breakout season for the Philadelphia Eagles. We're going to go inside why, not just name names and say big stats. There's reasons why these guys might break out more so than you might imagine, and we'll get through that. And then, Adam, as we get right into July, everybody's favorite series will begin, and that is our annual NFC East preview series with Greg Cosell. We'll start off with the Washington Commanders, go to the New York Giants, then the Dallas Cowboys, and round it off with the Philadelphia Eagles. First two weeks of July, going to be a very, very good uh, podcast content offering from Inside the Birds. Yeah, look, and with the craziness of the, the NFC East, we haven't had a repeat winner since 2004. You never know. <laughs> And we're going to outline these next four shows after this one today, uh, what this this division looks like from the great Greg Cosell. We will be back with us again, and we'll we'll be announcing content, you know, in July and August and so forth. Um, and we'll, we'll get through that. But Greg was definitely going to be back with us. And um, this is an, always an interesting series because what you think sometimes is not really what you get. You know, you can't predict injuries, obviously. Uh, age sometimes catches up the clubs. But as you were saying on this show, uh, uh, a recent show with you and I, it would be nice if the division got more competitive. And that's what you're going to one of the many things you'll get out of the series we do with Greg is you'll 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 get a you'll get a good feel. And we 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 all three of us went over this. You're going to know when you get done these teams, okay, this team is not as good as maybe the media thinks or maybe it's even better than the media thinks. It depending mm-hmm. on what team you're talking about, but right. it's totally unbiased like we always do and we get we get to the nitty-gritty of it. Awesome. Awesome. So I I look forward to this episode. Um, The nitty gritty is a good term because we're going to go through some breakout candidates. And I think um, when most people think of breakout candidates, they think of a guy uh, stats, you know, oh, we, he did this one year, did that another year. Well, we, we went beyond that because we don't just focus on stats. We went on positional value. And honestly, there's different reasons that players break out. Uh, Some might just be that young talented kid who just needed some experience and bam by year two high draft pick he's ready to go some adam we we see all the time guys break out because they're good players they may not be the best players but they're in the right scheme or they have the right coaching behind them they may not be the most talented but they're put in the best environment to succeed and therefore you see them break out and i think some of our candidates fill all those criteria in different ways so we'll start with our first one which to me i think the guy who's obviously most poised to have a breakout year simply on his talent alone right and the fact that he's got a year under his belt now is the young man that they chose out of georgia in the first round ninth overall jalen carter uh this is a guy who is not supposed to need some great defensive coordinator or some great D line scheme to be able to win. He's got so much amazing talent that we saw at times early last year that, you know, that with the coaching, with the scheme, with the, the, the experience that he has, Jalen Carter could be a pro bowl, all pro type player as, as soon as this year. So the reason why he's on my list and why he fits the, the the criteria for a breakout player is a couple things. He, we saw that he just did not play well the final quarter of the season. It just there, there are a multitude of reasons. He just did the tape was not very good. Um, he needed more, more discipline with his technique. There's just some things were not as good. Now, if J- Fletcher Cox was back this season, he would not be on my list. He still could do well. He did well last season, by the way, by rookie standards, he was really good. Mm-hmm. But it would be hard for him to take the next step with Fletch there because he's going to play the same position three technique. Um, yeah, sure. They play four eye and they play some other positions, but his main position should be the three where that that's the, you know, the Warren Sapp position. That's the explosive interior alignment. And, and the other reason, and this is big, this is what I've gotten for personnel people. I have guys that I know in the league have been in the league a long time that would rather have, believe it or not, a big time interior pass rusher than an edge rusher. 
because, and this is always explained to me by one guy, a quarterback absolutely positively hates pressure up the middle. You you can't escape quickly enough. If you've got, like Aaron Donald, right, when Aaron Donald was the best defensive player in football for many years, the way he, now he also, despite being 6'1", he, you can move him around, but when he was playing inside and broke the pocket, the quarterback was helpless because you you when it's the edge, when you're seeing a guy come off the edge, you just move. Mm-hmm. When it comes up the middle, <laughs> you don't know where to go. And it's really hard to think that quickly as a quarterback. You're just going to bail. You're just you're just going to get rid of the football. And so some people believe that it's better to have an interior rusher than an edge rusher. I wasn't of that thought until I spoke to a bunch of people about it. I've kind of ran names by them, and they all agreed. Like, you, you look at Fletcher Cox, by the way, and Fletch also, by the way, played very well last season. When Fletch was in his heyday, and he brought the energy – you simply couldn't stop the guy, and he was a home record, man. He was incredible. Yeah. So it, to move this along, uh, Jalen Carter is my breakout candidate. I choose to believe that Clint Hurts going to take him to the next level. And the other thing is, with, with Fletch gone, he has to know it's on him now. There's nobody else to help him. They're not going to sub him for PJ Mustafer or Marlon Tui Peloto. I mean, they give him a, a couple snaps off, yes, but they're expecting to play almost every snap. And mm-hmm. and by the way, he'll be in the nickel. We were talking about this in the other show, so. It's all set up there for him. If he brings the energy and uh, everything I've heard about Clint Hurt, Clint Hurt's going to get it out of him. Yeah. I think, you know, we, we probably had a couple options here. Jordan Davis was someone last year we thought might be mm-hmm. a breakout candidate. And you could argue the Eagles need him to be a breakout candidate this year for their defense to succeed because of the uniqueness of the position that he plays. But I agree with you in that I think Jalen Carter would be more prone to fulfilling that breakout promise because I don't want to diminish Jordan Davis, but in Jordan Davis, what you see is just an unbelievably shaped athlete for the size and the ability to drive people back that you just, you just, you don't see too many people that size with that kind of athleticism. And he just has to put the conditioning together, the technique. I think Jalen's easier to put your money on because he's further along in the, in the football part of the game. Like, how to use your hands, how to be violent, how to be quick off the line of scrimmage, how to rush the passer, how to stop the run, whereas some of that stuff for J- Jordan Davis is is still a work in progress. I mean, they're trying to get Jordan Davis to just, you know, go from being a behemoth of a human being into a, a three-down football player eventually, where Jalen Carter's already got the skills to be it. And I go back to Greg Cosell. I thought I think he described Jalen Carter perfectly coming out of college. He he said he reminded him, if I'm correct, he's reminded him of a combination of Gerald McCoy and and Damakong Sue because Carter plays with the violence of Sue. I mean, and I mean that in a positive way, not the stuff that got <laughs> Sue in trouble. I mean, like the hand, the ability to just move people. Just you remember that that one? I forget that one game where he literally just slapped the guy's helmet and he went to the ground. Like Sue had just unbelievable unbridled strength, right? But McCoy had way more interior burst than Sue, and you've seen that from Jalen Carter too. So it's a really good description, and I think that combining those traits is why you would put your money on Davis to be the top breakout candidate. Over, oh, I'm sorry, on Carter to be the breakout guy over Davis. Oh yeah, I I, I don't trust Davis yet. I, I'm um I got. I got fooled last season. You know, we heard such good stuff from people about kind of shape he showed up in. And yeah, he did get off to a great start. No question. The tape is really good. And then he really, boy, did he regress. Right. You, you right. mentioned a couple of the points, the technique, hand usage, playing too high. Then you can, then the problem is his, his conditioning in season wasn't very good, very clear from the tape. It's can't challenge it. The tape showed it. Right. Like, and you know, by when he's getting stood up repeatedly, the conditioning's a problem. It's just, you can't have that happen. Now, again, we're hoping now with Fangio and uh, Clint Hurt that this gets solved in, in terms of the technique stuff. But getting back to Carter, yeah, Sue was the one I came up with, and Dominic and Sue. That was that was everything I was told. In fact, think about it this way: just Sue was with them two years ago in twenty two. Wouldn't that be? Would have that been cool if he was with them oh like ten God. plays a game just to to tutor? Because yeah. Sue, the violence and you know the anger that he played with. But within the rules, usually, not always, but usually, was just so you don't find. And by the way, Sue's bigger, he's longer. He was a pretty good pass rusher, way better pass rusher than people know. One of the best he tackles during his day in the National Football League. Carter is actually more talented. Yeah. And 
I'm I'm just choosing to believe that he knows now it's on him. There's and you but and he he also got off to a great start last season. He just didn't finish well. So I'm I'm choosing to believe that Clint Hurts going to take him to the next level. Sure. And so so we don't put stats onto it, but I mean a breakout season for Jalen Carter, he probably gets somewhere a north of five and a half, six and a half sacks, if not more, and then a, more pressures. But I think you nailed it. The the breakout is contingent on be a three down defensive tackle, be able to play. Uh, as I mean, you're going to rotate, of course, but but be able to occupy that 60 percent snap share that Fletcher Cox would play in his heyday. Um, and that that's what it, that's what it looks like to me. Just be that starter and that, you know, hobo caliber defensive tackle. Honestly, he had he not had the late season fade. I mean, you, you could I, I, all pros too strong, but he was really good. Like you, he, he was great. Yeah, he could be unblocked like he. Let's put it this way. To, uh, last year, he would have been the second pick overall if the Cardinals would have passed him on whatever the, you know, as any really teams two through nine, mm -hmm. two through whatever. What, what did he, was Carter, 10th or 9th overall? Well, I mean, to, to go, it was ninth, but to go beyond that, most personnel people we spoke to felt he was the most talented player in the draft. Best player, but the problem yeah. is, in terms of number one, the, the, the Panthers going quarterback, it didn't matter who it was. Right, right. They're going quarterback. It's, it's not uncommon yeah. for the number one right. player in the draft not to go number one. Right, right. But I'm saying he would have gone too if the Cardinals felt comfortable with him. He was number two. I mean, they just yep. didn't. Yep. Which is, hey, the Eagles did, and so far, so good. Uh, he He's just got to do everything they ask. But um, it's to think that he could be better than, than Fletcher Cox is, you know, is putting it out there, but he absolutely can. He, he's so he's so gifted and so strong and so talented. It's kind of one of these things where giddy up, guys. Let's see. He, he's got a chance to do it. There you go. All right, so that was our, our top kind of breakout candidate, Jalen Carter, defensive tackle. If there was going to be an honorable mention at the position, you might take Jordan Davis. You might take Milton Williams. You might say, hey, year four, he's going to get more time. He's going to be a starter. Um, I, I don't know what his ceiling is, though. I don't know if he'll be better than what we've seen the last three years. I don't think he'll be worse or regress. I, I think he's a very good story, as you've said many times. I just don't know if the capacity is there to just take the game to another level you know, yeah, in, in year four. Right. Yeah, it's a funny it was rookie though. He's not you, you're not gonna be wild by his numbers. He's not gonna be a 10 sack a year guy. Remember, sacks are literally individual plays. Right. The guy could play 300 snaps, he has five sacks, he didn't have a great season. He there's five individual individual plays. He won. You got to be careful with with sack numbers. They don't always tell the real story, mm -hmm. the context. But this guy plays and he plays tackle, he hustles, great energy, doesn't take plays off. Been a really good development as a third round pick. There's not much more you can get. Again, he's not a big sack guy. He blows plays up. He's got scheme versatility. Good football player. I thought about him. I don't know that he has it in him to be a guy that is going to put major numbers, pressure numbers. I, I don't know that we're going to see that. Yeah. But I'll say this. It's his final year of his rookie deal. This is a big year for him. So you know what? This this is good that he is because he's he's still got to take to the next level. There you go. All right. Um, we had a great chat. Uh, speaking of of breakout players, because on offense, I think Eagles fans are expecting a breakout for the entire offense with Kellen Moore in charge. And we had an amazing conversation, as we always do, with our good friend, John Filippo, former Eagles court, Super Bowl champion, quarterbacks coach, former NFL cor uh, offense coordinator. Uh, he was, um, he, you know, addressed a variety of things from motion, shifting, the mm -hmm. importance of a third receiver, which is not what, you know, a strength right now for the Eagles. I mean, he had some really, really good insights and that's available on Patreon. You got, if, if you want the best and you want this great insight, you got to get it at patreon.com slash inside the birds. It was a fascinating about 40 minute conversation with flip coach flip uh we even had patreon members ask questions and we threw them at flip and he answered them i know 19 friars got one answered eddie garcia got one answered a bunch of people got him got him answered so that's one of the great advantages of being a patreon member on inside the birds so it's patreon.com slash slash inside the birds and we got a lot more content and uh a lot more to announce uh for our patreon members coming soon Oh, yeah. So he's agreed. John's going to come on with us right before training camp starts. It's going to be more training camp focused, plus uh, the members questions, which is great. And he's he's happy to take he told me he's like, dude, anything I'll take it. Yeah, he's he's great. He's phenomenal. And and John's got a future when he retires from coaching and whenever that is someday. He's now a head coach in the the UFL. But the, the, the story that he tells, I don't want to give it away, but the story that he tells about the third receiver that, that uh, I had no idea he was going to go in that direction. 
And the for, the the uh, Hall of Fame quarterback who told him why it's so important to have one, it blew his mind, it blew your mind and our mind. Like the way John told that story, I was like, wow, I didn't know it was quite like that. And the way that John described it, why it's so important based on this legendary quarterback in a TV production meeting, I thought it was phenomenal. <laughs> it was a great story. Uh, delivered in a way that only Flip can deliver, by the way. So that's, uh, that's another John. perk of uh, yeah. Patreon yeah. is that he is undistilled. Uh, on that network all right so uh let's take a quick break before we get into our next uh candidates for for breakout year and hear for a word from our friends at ocean casino resort in atlantic city go to get your game on go for the beers go for the cheers go for the hit and the hits go for the stakes and the stakes go to get your parlay on Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. Okay, so the next guy we're going to talk about as a breakout candidate is sort of opposite of Jalen Carter in that you're really not going to measure his breakout year in a stat or any stats or violent play i mean he's a, a different kind of guy and this is what i meant where some guys break out because they're in the right environment and the right coach behind them and they literally break out by doing the job that they're asked to do uh and do it well and so when you look on offense adam there are so many veterans who have already broken out it was hard and so many uncertainties like slot receiver and right guard but cam jurgens comes up as a guy who to me you know, the only stat that will that can help tell a story is how many games that he's he's played because he's struggled a little bit so far with injuries and had some injury issues. I believe uh, foot injury issues also at Nebraska. But here's a guy who's going to be the starting center on an offensive line that has three Pro Bowl talents on it already and a couple of all-pro talents are on it. To his left will be a Pro Bowl Landon Dickerson. The question mark is to his right. But with Jeff Stoutland, and his track record of developing guys, including Dickerson and Mylotta and Lane Johnson, you feel pretty good that if he can learn the, the the nuance that comes with this position that Jason Kelsey had mastered, and Flip was great on that too, um, then he can really solidify himself as a center for the Eagles for years to come. Yeah, so what I'd add to that is, so what we've heard is he's he's been much better at traffic sorting, which is really hard for guys who not played a lot of offensive line in general. Now he's moving to that that high traffic position, and he, he's the air traffic controller man. He's got to sort out where everybody's coming. Pre snap is, is something that you know we talked to a former Eagles player uh, who was with them in recent years who said like that was his biggest challenge for Jurgens because he's new to the position at center, is relatively new. He only played it two years in Nebraska. He's playing right guard last season. It's just you know you don't know till you get there. Like w w there's no Kelsey to fall back on. He's got to be the guy. And he's super athletic. He's got good size for the position. He's really smart, moves well. Flexibility is really good. Yes, he's had injury history. You're absolutely right. That That's a little bit of a concern, but I, I don't know I would have put on this list a month ago, but I've been doing a lot of digging on Jurgens and everything I've been turning up is really good. Okay, that's you, good. You can't predict injury. You, you can't. I, I don't, unless there's a guy like, okay, Avanti Maddox, if a guy is injury, injury prone tag, like if he's brittle, small build, compact maybe susceptible to injury that's one thing but Jurgens has had some bad luck look at Landon Dickerson been pretty healthy surprisingly after all the knee problems knock on Woody he he got a big extension and he's been a good story for them so you never know with injuries but getting back to Jurgens, he's just the guy that that they they handpicked this was the guy they handpicked to uh, to replace Kelsey and it's his time now there's no turning back uh, everything I've heard uh last last several weeks here has been really good with this guy uh, he's 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 another breakout player again as you said the cardi you can measure with stats you can't hear it's all tape based and while greg cosell and others with us all season we'll be checking back uh we'll, we'll check with other people around the league what the opponents think of jurgens we'll get it unvarnished like we always do what does it look like and we'll tell you the truth but jurgens is absolutely a breakout player to me yeah and i i do think something uh john defilivo talked about with us on the patreon channel helps out my feeling that he can really break out and that's I don't think Kellen Moore is going to come in here 
and absolutely change up the entire run scheme. Jeff Stoutland is still the run game coordinator. And what the Eagles have done well, you know, there's Nick Sirianni said, we're going to keep some of the concepts we've done well. What they've done well over the last three, four years with Nick, under Nick Sirianni is run inside zone. They've run duo. They have basically been an interior run team. They'll sprinkle in the wide zone, but they're not a East-West running team like, say, Shanahan or the way McVay used to be before last year. Right? They are a power inside, use those big bodies, get those double teams. And so Cam's going to have a behemoth next to him in Landon Dickerson when they double team or a behemoth most likely next to him in either Becton or, or um, Tyler Steen. Right? Those are big guys. These are not small interior linemen. And now you got Saquon Barkley behind you. So for him to be able to put that initial reach block on or block and then climb into the second level, that's why they drafted him because he had the kind of athleticism that reminded him of Jason Kelsey. He should be able to quickly get into the second level, cover up a linebacker, cover up a safety. And again, he's in, I don't think there's going to be a huge difference in their run scheme. I could be completely wrong, but I would imagine that with Stoutland there and the things that they've done well, they're going to continue. So instead of having to be a guy who has to replace a legend and learn a new scheme, I think he's just going to comfortably slide in there and do what the center has been doing in this offense for several years now. And that helps. Yeah. And it's his third year as a professional. Uh, He knows Stoutland. It's, he knows what the expectations are Mm -hmm. and everything we heard is he should be able to handle it. Look, is every snap going to be great? No. Is he, it's the, the traffic sorting, which we've heard in the off season has been good. But you don't know till you get there. We'll get a little bit better idea of training camp for sure, because mm-hmm. that's when there's real competition. But there's some things that you don't know because he has not been a full-time starter at center at the NFL level. So you don't really know how is he going to react to some not good snaps. How do they how do they handle this working together? Get can they get their timing down? There's just so many things that you don't know, but everything we've heard has been good. So let's see what happens. But uh the, the, he was selected in the second round two years ago for a reason. And I know. And other teams we spoke to were they like this pick. Uh, they thought that he could replace Kelsey. Some other teams we talked to, they thought that this was a really smart pick by the Eagles. But now is the time. We'll see if it happens. And then it's not. And by the way, it's not like they have a good fullback option. It doesn't work. Matt Hennessy is on the roster. And Brett Toth took some snaps at center. Dylan McMahon's really small. Mm-hmm. There's really not a good. It, it's really Jurgens going forward. That it's kind of like it's either him or nobody. To be honest with you. Yeah, you're right about that. You're absolutely right. So there's a lot of pressure on him in a, in a variety of ways. All right. Uh, I hope everybody's been looking at InsideTheBirds.com because Andrew DiCecco has been an awesome job giving his own takes on breakout candidates, uh, guys to watch at training camp, his most recent article. Uh, well, yesterday's article, I should say, on on um, on uh, Wednesday was uh, about five guys who he thinks have something to prove going into training camp. And he had some interesting names there to watch a uh, really good story on how important CJ Gardner Johnson's return to the secondary is going to be. And uh, he had a, he had a couple of good stories, one on EJ Jenkins, who's kind of flying under the radar here, but uh, he caught up with EJ Jenkins and talked about EJ's transition from a college wide receiver to a tight end uh, and how he's getting that blocking element down because he knows that there's that opportunity uh, to get on, you know, to make this 53, if you can block and play special teams, the, the catching came easy to him because he's a former wide receiver it's the other parts of the position that he's really honed in on. Yeah, look, he, he transitioning. It's interesting to hear him talk about what, how he put weight on. <laughs> he's talking about yeah. hummus and other stuff. That was really funny. <laughs> yeah, the hummus, right? Yeah, because I'm a big hummus guy. And uh, garbanzo beans, you know, is how you make hummus. But yeah, there, look, there's an opportunity. They have a lot of guys at tight end. But other than Goddard and Uzama, who'll be his backup, that's it. There, there's, there's a need for a third tight end. It, it's wide open. Mm-hmm. We'll see what happens in training camp. But yeah, that's a that's kind of like, and we'll list the training camp battles when we we're closer to training camp. That's a battle for that number three job. It absolutely is a battle. A hundred percent. It should be a good one, a really really good one all throughout camp with a lot of different guys who have different abilities from Jenkins to Calcaterra to Alberto. So I, I yeah, that'll be a re- it'll the preseason games to me are going to be really fascinating yeah. for that to see how how the snap share goes. And by the way, if they play the roster tango, in the term we came up with four years ago because we they kept doing it or maybe five years ago, but. If they if they do it with okay Goddard and Uzama make it and they decide you know what we're we're gonna cut Alberto we're gonna cut Calcaterra one we'll put one or two of them if they pass the ravers is, is Albert oh is he in, is he yeah he's a vested veteran so he's not even subject to it so that's actually easier where Calcaterra is subject to waivers Alberto is is not subject to waivers so they could work it out with his agent if they don't want to keep him say hey we want him back 
when I'm in the practice squad. And by the way, he we're going to activate him. You know, every three or four weeks, we're going to we're going to put him on the roster now. You know, if he's amenable to it, great. If not, go somewhere else. But they're going to have an issue at corner because they've this year they actually have legitimate competition, legitimate enough players that you might want to keep six, which mm-hmm. is a lot outside corners. And that that unfortunately you got to cut corners somewhere, and tight end could be that that position. We'll talk more about that leading up to training camp. But you're right, that battle's going to be pretty good at tight end. 100. percent All right, when you think about summer, Adam, you think about Eagles training camp and then the oncoming season. You also think about great concerts. Everybody loves to go to great concerts in the summer. The Game Time app, which we tell you about all the time, great ticketing app. They've got their summer concert series, and there are tickets to some amazing performers this summer. All right, whether it's uh, you got you've had Adele making the tour, Olivia Rodrigo, Bruno Mars, Billy Joel, Rolling Stones, Garth Brooks. I mean, these are legends in the music industry here. Rolling Stones, Garth Brooks, George Strait, Chris Stapleton, and Bruce Springsteen and Pink. You can get tickets to see all of them if you can afford that or just any of them if you just want to get out and get to a good good concert so make sure if you do it you're using the game time app and take advantage of all those fantastic deals we talk about the flash deals the zone deals the zone deals that allow you to save when you choose a section and game time choose the seats the flash deals where you save with the exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. And by the way, this all is could be concerts, comedy, theater shows, sports. Go see the Phillies, right? The white hot Philadelphia Phillies. You can save up to 60% on buying last minute for any of that. We've told you about the all-in pricing. It shows you the total fee up front. So there's no surprises at the checkout and the amazing panoramic view you get on the app from your seat. You know exactly where you're sitting and exactly what kind of sight lines you're going to have before you even click the checkout button, all right? Uh, Game time, they've got the lowest price guarantee. It credits you 110% of the difference if you find a better price. And of course, your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry, all right? Take the guesswork out of buying tickets. Know what you're buying on the Game Time app. Create an account. Use the code BIRDS, B-I-R-D-S, for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code BIRDS, B-I-R-D-S, for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today, last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, so we're going to have to talk about another breakout candidate who might combine the same reasons for the first two guys. Talent, coaching, scheme, environment, all of that. And uh, if this guy breaks out, Adam, He's he's one of the guys that I think if the if he really breaks out, the Eagles can go from a team that you think can be pretty good to a team that can be extraordinarily good and a defense that can be very fearsome. All right. So the reason why I have this guy we're going to talk about on our list is he's going to have a better opportunity. He barely played as a rookie, but the guy was a first round pick, and a lot was expected of him. He just didn't have any opportunity to do it, and you know he's mostly a special teams player. But this year he's going to play more. But what he's going to do is he. He's going to do well for the, the snaps that he gets. But let's talk about Nolan Smith. Again, Nolan Smith didn't really contribute much, but he didn't get much of a chance. Josh Sweat really fell off the second half of the season. He took a big pay cut. He's back, though, on a one-year deal. He's only 27. We're not sure if Sweat could get back to where he was before last season. Now, I know the coaching, uh, you know, the, the real Fangio's here, and I know Jeremiah Washburn handles the edge rush group. But they don't have anyone like Nolan Smith who's that quick upfield. Huff's long, he's explosive, but he doesn't have Smith's speed. Sweaty doesn't have Nolan Smith's speed. Jalen Suns a total project. There might be weeks he doesn't even dress. So today he'll he could be a factor down the road. But this is if Nolan Smith's going to be like he could be in in nickel or average obvious pass rush situations. He may be able to find a get, way to get him in there. It, it, I know you've alluded to this, not that he's great at it, but maybe there's a way to have Sweat line up inside in nickel. You know, uh, yeah. you know, the Possibly. down lineman let him play yep. tackle. So, like, and I know some people don't think he's all that comfortable with it, but getting Smith on the field, he's a former first round pick last year, second year in this league. Here, this is his chance to shine in his in his sub package role. He's certainly not going to start, but I see him being effective in his role. And now, again, you you everybody has their break breakout criteria. I'm saying in the role that it's gonna he's going to have, which could be way bigger than last year. Let's say it's forty percent play time. 
He's gonna, he's gonna, you're gonna know when he's on the field. That that's my point. Yeah, a hundred percent. And and he's a guy I wonder that if the Vic Fangio influence really helps out, not just from a pass rushing standpoint, but he's such a great athlete, such a a hard practice worker, Adam. You wonder if as a hook defender, which the edge rushers have to be occasionally, will he be disruptive? He's got very long arms, um, slender frame, right? He can drop really well, probably drops better than most of the edge because they played him at off ball linebacker last year. We know that. Uh, you bit, wonder yeah. if he has a chance to tip some passes, intercept some passes, take him back. You also wonder if Vic is able to move him around a little bit to create some mismatches. I think this guy, more so than a Bryce Huff, uh, who's already broken out and is probably going to be used. You're going to line up here and you're going to rush the passer because you're really good at it. I just wonder with the versatility that Nolan Smith has, if the defensive brain trust there headed by Vic doesn't put their heads together and say, hey, we can move this guy around, unlock him a little bit because he can rush from a variety of positions, including, you know, he can be, he can look like an off ball linebacker in a nickel or a dime, but really be an extra rusher or a rusher while somebody drops back to be, to create sim pressures. So I just think you have a whole, you have the idea of a Swiss army knife with him. It just needs to be recognized and we need to be, he's got to get stronger himself, Nolan Smith, and be able to show that he can handle that. But if he does, you're the, what you can envision from him can be some pretty good production. Yeah, he did say he put on some size. He's around 245. He was at the he, combine. I, see, I don't know. You, I, in his press conference, he said, I plan to come in. I, I'm coming in at 245. That was his exact words. I'm coming okay. in at 245. But, but I was told he was not at 245 yet. So I'm wondering if he oh, meant, okay. if he said that as a sort of, I'm coming in. Oh, I'll be there at 245. You don't yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Hey, little little things, a couple things to add here. So at the combine, he was six two and a quarter, mm -hmm. which is you like him. You love your edge rusher to be six four, but a hey, six two and a quarter. But yeah. he's super explosive, very fast. Here's the point you talked about: he's long, he's deceptively long. Like if you, it, it's really interesting. His arm length is really good for his size at six at thirty two and five eighths. Mm -hmm. That's around, by the way, Andre Dillard. You know, remember Dillard oh. had short arms? Yeah, he did have the short arms for a tackle. Dillard a little bit longer, but not by much. But this is what I find interesting. So a guy, uh, Tavius Robinson, who was an edge rusher in the same class, way taller, almost four inches taller, six, six and one eighth. Believe this or not, Nolan Smith uh, wingspan is longer at 81. Yeah. Robinson was 79 and a quarter. Boy, that is a big difference. Well, th that is exactly what I was talking about as a hook defender and as a dropper. Can he be disruptive? Can he narrow those lanes with the, the hands? Or can they teach him the right way to use his hands to obstruct passes, to close lanes, and then maybe pick a few off? I mean, if he if he gets the ball in his hands, Adam, and going the other way while the offense is going that way, he's got so much burst and speed, you know he can take it back to the house pretty easily. So they just need to have that. He just needs to have the instincts, the alertness, and the technique down. And if he can, that could be really good. Ready for this one? This is, you know, you talked about a straight line speed. This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like this, I don't know what the record is for an off the ball linebacker. Excuse me. I, well, he could do some of that, but he's really more of an edge rusher. 43940. I know it's just running straight. His 10 yard split was 152, which is really, really good. What, what, I mean, that is exceptional. Mm -hmm. Short area quickness. So the analytical data is really good on him. It's probably why. And I could tell you for a fact that the Panthers are going to, the Panthers in the second round, uh, whatever they picked two years ago, it was either going to be Mingo, Jonathan Mingo, who they took, or Nolan Smith. It didn't matter because Eagles took him. But I know the Panthers really like Nolan Smith because they they felt his explosion was incredible. Oh, by the way, Nolan's vert, when the best of any player, 41 and a half. That's really good, man. That's uh, he, you, there, There's some great potential with him. If you, yeah, if, if, I if, you can, if you can break down an opponent's protection scheme and, you know, you put him out there at linebacker and he looks like he's just dropping or something – and they slide to protect one way, and then you twist or you stunt him over two gaps. You know, you have the the line crash one way, and he comes in from the the, the off ball linebacker spot right down the middle with those big long arms. You know, he'll be unblocked sometimes in those situations, and right in the quarterback's face. That that could be a very very difficult ask for a quarterback to then figure out a way to get rid of the ball or not get sacked. So there's there's an opportunity there. I, to, the athleticism, the traits alone, and he's smart. He can pick it up. Again, really, it's just about experience getting bigger and taking the coaching. I don't think it's that far for him. It's just got to be done. Yeah, look, it's a, this is an opportunity for him. He's going to play more. 
I'll, I'm just interested because you've now have the you have the real Fangio here. How does he see him? We'll, we'll we'll learn more in training camp about how they split up the snaps there, just in terms of how they see it. And I know Jeremiah Washburn will have a big say in that because he handles the edge rushers. But it'll be fascinating to see. I, like it's funny. I before we get out of here, I thought about putting Zach Bond in because I've heard some really good stuff about Zach Bond. Wait, hold that thought. I love it. Yeah. I love where you're going okay. with this. Right. I did want to go through maybe like one or two honorable mention names yeah. first. I just want That's to pause. Good. Pause real quick to hear a word from our friends at Sky Motor Cars. Sky Motor Cars in Westchester is a different sort of dealership. All it takes is one look at their Highline pre-owned vehicles that people over the country want and need. Owner Brett Shoulder makes sure you don't spend a dime of your money before you purchase the car. Sky Motor Cars allows you to make all the decisions regarding your next vehicle. At Sky Motor Cars, you never have to spend more than necessary. Visit SkyMotorCars.com today or call 610-918-7225. And if you happen to stop in at Sky Motor Cars, make sure you tell them Adam and Jeff sent you. You will get a great deal. If not, you can visit them at SkyMotorCars.com. That's Sky Motor Cars out there in Westchester, PA. All right. this is So you were getting into something like that I wanted to quickly get into before we get out, which yeah. is some, some honorable mention candidates. And Zach Bond was one of the guys that jumped in my head. I mean, this guy could wind up being completely just a special teamer that we never hear of, or <laughs> yeah. he can wind up really fulfilling some of the, the vision that they have for him. And, and we're talking about, whoa, Zach Bond by the end of the year. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is, you know, he's been a part-time player, a backup special teams players. And, you know, his first four years with the saints, decent pass rusher at Wisconsin, not given much of a chance to do it, but as we've said for you know, six or seven years now, coaches love it when you could play a guy from an inside, inside linebacker standpoint, in a 34, whatever you want to call this thing, five, whatever they're going to play, 34 front, you know, five man, whatever the hell it is. But with your inside backers being able to rush, which you should be able to do, he's good enough size. Mm -hmm. This guy did a good job. They, from what we've heard, they were pretty happy with what he did. I know it's only the off season. Doesn't mean a whole lot. The other problem that plays into it and why I'm not going to put him on the list is you would think that Kobe Dean would start next to Devin White. It's not a given. Mm -hmm. This team is coming back from a major injury. Unfortunately, you know, he can't, he, tail end of OTAs he did a little bit of work but I, I I'm not sure because and by the way you, situationally you could you could sub out your because one guy could be nickel one guy could be your dime linebacker if you do that one guy could be your base down guy but I don't know if Bond will be on, on the field enough see that's what we don't know enough yet about how they're going to substitute these guys and they have way better depth at the position now it, it, you start two inside backers you don't play three in this scheme you play, play two right that's the problem we just don't know we can't say for sure that Bond will start because Dean's going to have a lot to say about it and then we'll see if Devin White who did flash in OTAs we'll see how real that is yeah you got Burks there Trot Jr. Vince Sumeran who flashed uh, last season in that one start against the Giants so it's the good thing though you know as as we move along here the competition in training camp is going to be really good at this position. I'm not saying it's going to be – they've gotten younger. I'm not saying the talent level is super great, but there's going to be real competition. No one's given a job at either either the, the weak side job or the, the mic job. We'll see how it plays out in training camp. But Bond will have a chance to do something here. I agree. Um, the only other guy that really crossed my mind, and it would be sort of a guy who eventually breaks out later in the year – uh, is Sidney Brown? He's coming back from an ACL, but it's—I mean—it's not like he got his leg amputated. A lot of people come back from an ACL. <laughs> I'm, but I do feel like every time we talk about him, like, oh, got to get healthy. Got to. All right, he had an ACL repair. He'll be fine. Yeah. They come back <laughs> um, later. It, I mean, earlier. yeah. For some, it's yeah, slow. Like, like Michael yeah. Gallup, it took a while. He's a wide receiver. He years, really, really never became. Yeah. But I mean, there have been plenty of people who have torn their ACL and come back just completely fine. Mm -hmm. And he'll have an opportunity when healthy, when you know, learning the scheme. Uh, to get in as a starter, right when he's ready, I, I think he can. I shouldn't have any problems supplanting Reed Blankenship unless Reed is playing really well. And even if they're both playing well, there's there's opportunities for three safeties. And you know, Sydney just has those oh. kind of athleticism and instincts where you can see him in the right environment where he doesn't have to do a whole lot of man coverage and he can just kind of roam and be free of where he could his skills could really come in handy. All right, a couple things uh, on that, and I want to mention a couple corners here. With ACL, especially with Brown, from what I understand, it's not a question whether he'll be ready week one. It's it's that, you know, if you put a percentage, okay, how does the player feel on that knee? How much does he trust it? Does he feel he's 70%, 90 We're not going to know until we get there. Right. Now, here's another thing off of, you, you mentioned Sidney Brown, because I know for a fact they played some big nickel at, in Denver with Vic. We'll look into Chicago if he did it then. I don't, I, I'm not sure. But with Denver, they did. Will Parks was a part of that years ago before yeah. he came in 
So, uh, look, that could get Brown on the field earlier, you know, and they, they don't, they're very light at safety. That's the, really the only light, well, D tackle are pretty light on depth, but safety, they're not real good in terms of backups and both Gardner Johnson and Blankenship have had injury history, particularly Gardner Johnson. So they, they could really sign, they could really benefit from signing a veteran, but, uh, that, that's interesting. And then a corner, the reason why we don't have Rogers or Ringo on here, here's the thing, folks, they drafted Mitchell to start. Yeah. If he doesn't start week one, only because he's not ready yet. You don't draft a, a first round, a, a player in the first round and sit him. You don't do that unless the guy's not ready. Right. Eventually he's going to start and he's got corners starting outside corners rarely come off the field. Really yeah. some weeks, you know, they play hundred percent and that's with most teams. So it's hard to put two guys who are going to be backups. Now, uh, good feel good stories. Rogers has to have, has a chance to have a really good feel good story after everything he's been through professionally. And this will help the Eagles if if he if he takes this off season, and he looks like they thought he looked in the off season in training camp. Not only will he make the team, he'll be a factor on kickoff coverage. He'll also he could be their kickoff return. This is a good story for guys on a minimum deal. And with Ringo, the good thing is he could be if somebody needs a breather or if if the, we have to find out who's playing right and left corner in terms of the backups we don't we won't know till we get there until training camp it's one thing to do in the OTAs but it doesn't really tell you you have to see what happens in training camp but we've said this about backups from from coaches we've talked to over the years who of our backups could get us out of a bad spot if we need it like Rick did a little bit last year mm -hmm. or offense you know you it's like a your backup quarter like Gardner Minshew for uh, for for the Colts now, and unfortunately, it wound up being the, the basically three quarters of the season. They almost made the playoffs with him. But right. any position who's a backup, can I get three or four quality enough games where it's not such a drop off that we're in trouble? That's what you want from Ringo or Rogers, assuming they're the top backup backup outside corners. Now, did you, did may play into that? We don't know yet where he's going to line up yet, so we, it's hard for us to comment on it. He may wind up being the top backup outside corner. Who the hell knows? Right. No, a lot of teams Jeff and I talked to said. Oh, long term, he's going to be a safety. The Eagles don't see it the same way. They may be one of the only teams who sees it differently. But you know what? It only it only matters what they think, and we'll we'll learn more in training camp. Right, great. I read Reed Blankenship was that guy two years ago when C.J. Gardner Johnson got hurt. Marcus Epps was playing very well, and Reed yep. just went in and and was able to hold great it story. and make some plays and yep. and be that guy to hold it down. So yeah, good stuff, good stuff there. I really enjoyed this episode. Uh, really, really going deep inside why guys uh, we expect to break out can break out. And that's going to do it for this episode of inside the birds. Again, next uh, time you hear from us, it will be the start of our NFC East preview series with Greg Cosell. So I look forward for everyone uh, to listen in and tell us what they think. That's going to do it for this episode of inside the birds, the leading podcast and Eagles Intel. And as always, we thank you for flying with us inside the birds. Be sure to check out our friends at phlsportsnation.com. They're enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all Philadelphia sports teams. For the fan, by the fan is their motto. So make sure you check them out at phlsportsnation.com and on Twitter at phlsportsnation.